Nice. Woo, big one. So I had a viewer ask me, how is it that I consistently catch more limits than he does or than most people out on the lakes that I'm fishing? Ooh, big fish. And so I thought I'd go over a video today on five reasons why you suck at kokanee fishing. And the first one's a pretty obvious and mundane one, and that is you're just basically ignoring the kokanee basics. Um, I have my first video on the kokanee formula, and those three basic things that I think I see a lot of anglers messing up on is speed, depth, and location. I think the big one is speed. I see more anglers not hitting those right troll speed. They're typically going way too fast. Um, they're going, you know, two miles per hour or more, 1.8 or more. And true, you can catch some kokanee at those speeds, but that is not the ideal speed for most kokanee dodgers. It is not the ideal speed for most kokanee trolling. Depth is another one. A lot of people fish too shallow, um, and those fish just aren't going to come all the way up from the depths to hit your gear. I think location is a harder one that I, you know, I think most people do tend to move on from areas that um, don't have fish, but they have a bad habit of moving on from areas that do have fish. They get bit and they just keep on going. So yeah, they're really ignoring those three primary things, speed, depth, and location. And when I mean location, I mean areas that consistently hold fish. Look at the size of that guy. That guy's a chunker. Slam that micro hoochie. There we go. Nice. I think a second reason that a lot of people don't consistently catch kokanee like I do is they're very lazy fishermen. I see it all the time. I, you know, there's a lot of guys out there that'll be out trolling. They set their gear and they forget it and they're not really chasing the fish, right? Just because your gear is in the water doesn't mean you're actually really fishing. Like for example, um, you know, I've been using droppers for a long time, so I will chase marks. Like if I see fish, I'm always moving my gear up and down through the water column in pursuit of fish. And I do the same when I am out fishing on my downrigger on my autopilot. I'm always chasing those fish using the downrigger, chasing those fish using the dropper rigs. And I'm making turns. Um, I'll occasionally pull on the line. If I go through a school of fish and I don't get bit, I'll just pop my rods. And sometimes that's all it takes, you know? Um, you just have to be willing to actively fish. You can't just put your rod in a rod holder and uh, expect to do well. You have to fish. Um, I see guys trolling in straight lines. They'll blast right through an area. They'll go all the way across the lake. They'll never make a single turn. And I'm out, I'll come right in behind them doing S turns and just whack fish right behind them. So you definitely can't be a lazy kokanee fisherman and expect to catch lots of kokanee. I mean, sure, there are days that trolling on a straight line is going to do it, but there's a lot of days that it's not. Um, and it just pays to be active and engaged in the fishery. That's a nice chunky coke. So like that one was on the deeper one. And this morning I was catching fish up around 15 foot in the water column. But as that sun came out, hit the water, they've dropped deeper. I moved this rod deeper. I've been picking up more fish on it, so I'll push this one deeper. That is that whole idea of being active and engaged. These guys will come out, they'll get their downrigger set, they'll leave them at one depth, they won't change it all day. They won't change things up. It just boggles my mind. Oop, fish. On the pink. Ooh, nice fish. So a third reason that you might be struggling to catch kokanee is avoidance. Now, avoidance isn't really something that's your fault, but it's something that you can mitigate for. So avoidance is where kokanee are moving away from your boat for some reason. And this is pretty common, especially in the spring when kokanee are feeding on or near the surface. And they're just super sensitive to disturbance. Uh, they just don't like boats. They don't like motor noise. They just move away from it. And this is where long setbacks can really help you out. 
Um, this is especially true if you're running a louder, like two-stroke motor or louder motor, because um, they are sensitive to noise. You can just run a longer step back, 100, 150 feet, and do better. If you're running a downrigger, depending on the depth, um, if you're not getting big, try just a little bit longer setback. And that might be all that's key, mitigating for avoidance. Swam right in the net for me. What a, what a super nice guy. In a kayak, avoidance isn't really that big of an issue for me. Or at least it's never been. Because generally, I found they're not very averse to uh, paddle, pedal, or electric motor noises. That's a nice fish. When you go out like this and you get all your fish on one rod, you know that you need to change something. You can't just keep doing the same thing on the other rod and expect something magical to happen. Change it up. Oh, there's a fish on the drop back. Nice. <laughs> Sometimes just fresh bait matters. And I think that's something that I think is underestimated is, and its importance is bait. Sometimes I think it's over-exaggerated as well. There's a lot of marketing companies out there talking about scent and stuff. And I think, you know, there's been days that scents mattered for me, but those days are exceedingly rare. Um, it's just good quality, fresh bait on there and the right bait. So, you know, corn, maggots, shrimp, things like that. I'm amazed at the number of kokanee anglers that are going out and not using bait or not using quality bait. And what I mean by quality, I mean, is they're using a bait that's going to last on the hook that can withstand those strikes. They're using mushy corn. They're not taking care of it and keeping it cold. They're not curing it in salts um, and adding those oils to it. So really pay attention to bait, but I, you know, I don't think there's any one magical bait company or scent company that's doing something that's any better than anybody else. Um, I mean, there's a lot of people who will go out and they'll attribute all their success to a particular scent. And I'm like, you know, if you're not going the right speed, right depth, not running the right color, not in the right location, it doesn't matter. Scent doesn't just magically make fish appear, right? Man, these fish are just beautiful today. Another chunky coconut. There's fish. Big one. And the fifth and final reason you might not be catching kokanee has nothing to do with what you're doing, but it might just be the lunar cycle. And I've really noticed this on the days that I go out and I'm marking fish and I am just not catching, oftentimes it's related to the lunar cycle. And that is, I do very poorly on kokanee. Oop, I got a double going now. Um, I do very poorly on kokanee after full moon nights, especially clear full moon nights. Those fish feed through the night and they're just not hungry when it comes to the morning. But I have noticed on those times, when I get out there in the late afternoon or evening bite after full moon, it's red hot because those fish fed all night, then they kind of relaxed the, during the morning hours, and then they went back on the evening and afternoon feed. Oh, this is a rainbow trout. Gosh, that's not what I want. Whoa, this fish over here is big. On my left, so I'm gonna take care of this fish. Dang, this thing feels like a tank. It's just a nice kokanee. They just spunk. It's a spunky dude. That's a nice fish. Got him. Woo! Yeah. So definitely pay attention to those lunar cycles. It's less important if it's a cloudy night. Uh, because then they won't feed through the night. Uh, it's just, what happens is, during those full moon nights, uh, the their prey base, the plankton, all come up and concentrate to feed, because they love those full moon nights. And they come up and they feed, and they concentrate thick, and those kokanee just go crazy feeding on them. I guess I should get this rainbow trout off here. Sorry, buddy. I know it's not your fault that you inferior fish, but it's just, it's just who you are. 
Okay. One more hook. Don't don't do the head wiggle. Yeah. Ah, ouch. Hey. Kimikatsu hooks are sharp. Wow, that is a tank kokanee. Look at that thing. If you guys have any questions, just let me know in the comment section below. And be sure to like and subscribe to this video if you enjoyed today's content. I'll see you next time. And just remember, fish smarter, not harder. Bye, guys.